What's going on everyone? I'm back and with the NFL season set to begin in about a day here, I'm coming at you with my bold fantasy related predictions for every single team in the NFL, NFC to AFC, every single division. So let's get right into it. Starting with the NFC, specifically the NFC North, the team I want to begin with is the Green Bay Packers because I think the Packers can have an incredible offensive year in 2018. Led by a healthy Aaron Rodgers, he's got a good running game up and coming behind him. And even without Jordy Nelson, he's still got Devontae Adams, Randall Cobb, Geronimo Allison, and Jimmy Graham. But the guy that I want to focus on here is someone that I've been high on the entire offseason and that I continue to be high on today, and that is Randall Cobb. Because when it's all said and done, I predict that Cobb will finish as a top 15 wide receiver in PPR formats. I think he can go ahead and duplicate his best year in Green Bay where he went for about 1,200 yards, can get you 90 receptions. Look, without Jordy Nelson, Aaron Rodgers' favorite target, to me, the next man up as far as that chemistry with Rodgers is Randall Cobb. A healthy Randall Cobb and a healthy Aaron Rodgers for a full 16 games, I think Randall Cobb can outperform Devontae Adams in PPR formats. That's how confident I am with Cobb. Might sound crazy, but man, as far as value goes, you can get Cobb in late rounds. So why not do it? Why not take a chance on a guy that has top 15 potential for me in PPR formats? Next, we have the Minnesota Vikings, and this was already an offense that had a boatload of offensive talent, and now add Kirk Cousins to that crew. Well, unsurprisingly so, my prediction here centers around Cousins and one of his teammates in Stephon Diggs, because when it's all said and done, I predict a top five quarterback to wide receiver combination finish for these guys in 2018. And when you think of this category, maybe you think Big Ben, Antonio Brown, Matt Ryan, Julio Jones. Watson and DeAndre Hopkins will get ready to include Cousins and Diggs to this list because look this is bar none the best offensive talent Kirk Cousins has ever had around him and for Diggs this is going to be the best quarterback he's ever had throwing him the football so I feel really confident in saying that Diggs can finish as a wide receiver number one to go ahead and carry your squad and then Kirk Cousins can finish right around a uh, top five or right outside a top five quarterback uh, to lead fantasy this year and both guys can be had at very good value looking next at the Detroit Lions the guy that I want to talk about here is Matthew Stafford because I think that at the end of 2018 the quarterback that's going to lead the NFL in passing yards will be Stafford look Stafford has gotten over 5,000 yards passing once before and I think he can do it again in 2018 because he's got a very balanced offense around him and that team centers on the passing game now he has got the emerging Marvin Jones that he had so much chemistry with towards the end of last year. He's got the reliable Golden Tate, and he's got another emerging wide receiver in the rookie from last year in Kenny Galladay. Also, I think this will be finally the year where we see a 100-yard rushing performance from one of these running backs in Detroit, which will open things up in the passing game again and make them even more of a threat. So for that reason, I see Stafford finishing as the best passing quarterback in the NFL Stat-wise, that's going to translate to a top five finish. And where he's going right now in drafts, I think that value is incredible. Finishing off with the Chicago Bears, if you want a bold prediction here, I've got one for you because at the end of 2018, as far as fantasy scoring for quarterbacks is concerned that are non-rookies, I think Trubisky will be the worst in that category. And look, the stats, unfortunately, I think back this up because last year in 2017, his passing yards were absolutely garbage in 12 games. Don't get me started on his touchdown performance. Seven touchdowns in 12 games. If you're an NFL quarterback, you should be able to average at least one touchdown per game, which he didn't. And I don't care all the talent that you surround Trubisky with. Undoubtedly, the Bears made upgrades on the offense, but look, it's not the talent around the quarterback that makes the quarterback. It's the other way around, and I just don't think Trubisky has it. Uh... I don't think he's shown us anything to justify what the Bears did last year in the first round to go ahead, jump up one spot, give up all that draft capital for a guy that was unproven in college as well. And okay, the defense will give Trubisky some opportunities, but it can also go ahead and put even that much more pressure on Trubisky for him to go ahead and succeed. I just don't see it in Trubisky. I like the talent around him, but I don't like the quarterback. And honestly, 
I think he is going to be a bust and it's not going to take long for the Bears to see it because if Trubisky doesn't deliver at least an eight and eight year for the Bears with all the talent they have, I don't think you need any more justification in that he is a bust. And for all the Chicago fans out there, feel free to get at me on this one, but it's not a conversation I think you're going to win. Moving on to the NFC East and speeding things up a little bit here, the team I want to begin with is the New York Giants. And the prediction I have here centers around their offensive line and the accompanying running game. Now in the offseason, I really like some of the additions the Giants made to that line along with the additions in the draft. And as crazy as it sounds, I think that offensive line will be top five in the NFL when it's all said and done. Now the return of Odell Beckham is going to help that. Opposing defenses won't be able to send as much pressure with his return. And that passing game is going to help set up the running game where I think at the end of 2018, Saquon Barkley will be a top five fantasy running back because of all of these factors. Next, looking at the Philadelphia Eagles, unfortunately, I think the Super Bowl hangover will be real in 2018 for them. And look, it starts with the fact that Carson Wentz won't be available for the start of the season. I know Nick Foles will be there, but that offense just isn't the same with Foles versus Wentz. But my prediction here focuses on the running backs because at the end of 2018, I don't think that a single running back in Philadelphia will get you over a thousand yards rushing that's one of the reasons why i'm staying away from that backfield on top of the fact that just the eagles are a pass first team in general next looking at the dallas cowboys i think this might be one of the most easy predictions to go ahead and make but it is regardless that ezekiel elliott at the end of the year even with some of these troubles on the offensive line he will get the highest usage for a running back in the nfl that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate to him having the best fantasy season, but he will have the most opportunities because he will be given that football at every single possibility. No Dez, no Jason Witten, and I think he has an offensive MVP performance in him in 2018. Now, finishing things off with the Washington Redskins, again, my prediction here maybe is going to sound a little bit familiar because of how high I have been on Jordan Reed in 2018 with the addition of Alex Smith, a guy that loves his tight ends. If Jordan Reed stays healthy, he is a top four tight end in fantasy. Lock it down, could even jump to top three because we have seen how much of a stud he is when he's not hurt. He's putting up the numbers before. I think he's probably one of the best pass catchers that the Washington Redskins have. Give me Reed for a full 16 games and he is a top five tight end with great touchdown potential as well. Looking at the NFC West next, specifically starting with the Arizona Cardinals, I think the guy we all have to talk about here is David Johnson and obviously missed last year, but I think fingers crossed he will be back better than ever in 2018. He's a little bit more well rested and I think we finally get that thousand thousand combo, thousand yards rushing, thousand yards receiving. One of the many reasons why I think he should be the number one pick in fantasy and is going to finish out as the best fantasy running back as well. Next, looking at the 49ers, obviously a big story here is the Jarek McKinnon injury. And my prediction focuses in on one of his replacements in Matt Breida because I think Breida compares the most favorably to what Jarek McKinnon was. And look, McKinnon was a guy that we were all very high on, especially in PPR formats. And I think because of that reason, Brita will be the guy that emerges. Even though it's a hot hand situation to me, he is going to be the guy that has the highest ceiling out of him and Alfred Morris. Then looking at the Rams. Now, look, I've been on record saying I think the Rams will take a bit of a step back. But regardless, there is a guy on this offense not named Todd Gurley that I really like, and that is Cooper Cup. Because even with the newly added Brendan Cooks and all the money that he got, and with Robert Woods in that offense, I think Cup will be the best wide receiver for the Rams, especially in PPR formats, uh, thriving in the slot. And finally, maybe my boldest prediction centers around the Seattle Seahawks because I think Russell Wilson will finish as the MVP of the National Football League. And that's obviously going to translate to a bunch of fantasy success. But at the center of that, I think a little bit of a bonus prediction here. I think Doug Baldwin and Chris Carson will be his teammates in that glory. So I see big years for them as well. Finally, getting to the NFC South and looking at the Atlanta Falcons first, I think this will be the year in 2018 where they return to fantasy glory offensively. I think they finish as a top five offense. 
and I'm basing that on combined fantasy output from their starters. Uh, but look, I think what we saw last year was an aberration, somewhat expected considering Super Bowl hangover, but mostly the post-Shanahan era. They've had an extra year to get used to their new offensive coordinator, and they've still got studs offensively aplenty. Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, one of the best receivers in the NFL. Devonta Freeman's a stud. Even if he gets injured, Coleman is still there. And I haven't even mentioned Calvin Ridley, the newly added wide receiver. Next, moving on to the Carolina Panthers. Here are my prediction centers around the wide receiver, DJ Moore. And I'm saying he will be, at the end of 2018, the best wide receiver the Panthers have. Notice I'm not saying pass catcher because that would include Greg Olson, who I do think is actually the best pass catcher the Panthers have. But as far as wide receivers are concerned, look, even the former Steve Smith of the Panthers, the best wide receiver they've ever had, finally gave props to the Panthers and said, I think you guys finally got it right with DJ Moore. And if he is even 50% of what Steve Smith was, I think he will be the best wide receiver the Panthers have. I do like the addition of Norv Turner for what Cam Newton can do in the passing game. I think he's going to go ahead and encourage him more to pass it, to spread it out, and that is a good sign for DJ Moore as well. Next, getting to the Tampa Bay Bucks, my prediction here centers around the quarterbacks, and it's actually that when it's all said and done, Ryan Fitzpatrick will have started more games for the Bucks than Jameis Winston. He obviously gets a little bit of a boost straight from the get-go because Winston dealing with that suspension. But the fact that the Bucks even said that once Winston returns from suspension, it's not a guarantee that he's going to be their starter uh, speaks volumes to me. And unfortunately, that means even more so the Bucks offense is one that I am not touching in fantasy for 2018. And finally, looking at the New Orleans Saints, the guy that I want to focus on here is Cameron Meredith, the newly added wide receiver. And behind Michael Thomas, I actually predict that the Saints will have a great passing game, yet again, great rushing game, but Cameron Meredith will give you a sneaky good addition for a guy that will get you over a thousand yards receiving. Moving on to the AFC, starting with the AFC North and specifically with the Cleveland Browns. My prediction here is that both Jarvis Landry and Josh Gordon will finish as top 15 wide receivers in PPR formats. And look, in PPR, Jarvis Landry is a bona fide stud. He could be your wide receiver number one. And a lot of people right now are not that high on Josh Gordon, obviously nervous to go ahead and take a chance on him. But if he falls in your drafts, go ahead, scoop him up, because if he plays the full 16 games, he will be top 15, not only in PPR, but in standard formats too. Next, looking at the Pittsburgh Steelers, my prediction here centers around Big Ben and that at the end of the season, he will flirt with the top five quarterback finish in fantasy because I've said it before, I'll continue to say it. This is going to be the last time the Pittsburgh Steelers have this loaded of an offense. So this is their best and last time to go ahead and make a Super Bowl run. Le'Veon Bell ultimately, I think, will end up playing the season. Uh, but this will nonetheless, I think, be his last season in Pittsburgh. So for that reason, all the chips are in the middle of the table. Uh, the Patriots dynasty may, may be waning a little bit. So to me, all that translates to a hell of a good year for Big Ben. Looking at the Bengals next, I think my prediction here centers around that offense and its ability to bounce back in general. A lot of people, because of recency bias, possibly sleeping on the playmakers there. AJ Green, I think, will finish as a top five wide receiver. Joe Mixon, I could see being a top 10 running back. And even a guy like Andy Dalton, a lot of people are sleeping on. If Tyler Eifert plays a full 16 games, he will be a top 10 tight end as well. And finally, looking at the Baltimore Ravens, this will probably be a somewhat unpopular opinion here, but my prediction is that Alex Collins will be one of the biggest busts in fantasy. He's being drafted right around the third, fourth round. And to me, uh, a lot of people are treating him as a running back one. I think that's absolutely ludicrous. Last year, he was losing touches to the second and third string running backs. That Baltimore offense has been all types of inconsistent the last couple of years. And to me, that's way too risky to go ahead, invest a third or fourth round pick on uh, what people are treating as a running back number one. Continuing with the AFC East and looking at the Buffalo Bills first, my prediction here centers around their entire offense in that not only will they be the worst offense in fantasy, but also in the league in general, quite possibly the worst team in the NFL. Because look, they're being led by Nathan Peterman. That's already a rocky start to this. Uh, on top of that, their two biggest playmakers are probably the two biggest question marks in the NFL, with their wide receiver number one being Kelvin Benjamin, a guy that can't stay healthy as of late, and then LaShawn McCoy, McCoy a guy that 
uh, has too much drama off the field at this point in time, and also a guy that has his own injury concerns as well. Moving on to the Miami Dolphins, my prediction here is that Kenny Stills will be the top wide receiver for the Dolphins at the end of the year. Devontae Parker dealing with a broken finger, that's going to limit what he can do. Then Jarvis Landry obviously gone, so it's between Stills and Danny Amendola. Stills knows that system better, has more chemistry with Ryan Tannehill. He has been on the rise as of late, and I think he's going to end up being the go-to guy with a breakout year in 2018. Moving on to the New England Patriots, my prediction here centers around their backfield in that they won't have a single fantasy relevant running back. And what do I mean by that? Well, basically, uh, they won't have a top 15 running back in their arsenal because they just have too many guys, in my opinion. They have James White, they have Rex Burkhead, and they have Sony Michel. Okay, Sony Michel won't start the year as the guy. It'll probably be Rex Burkhead. But what's going to happen once uh, Sony Michel returns? Are they going to give him the rock as well? And with Tom Brady, he's going to do such a good job of spreading out the football that I don't think either one of those guys that are there is going to be the focal point at one point or another. And finally, finishing it off with the New York Jets, my prediction here is that this will be the year of Quincy Anunua. Last year was the year of Robbie Anderson. This year, I think Anunua ends up finishing with over a thousand yards receiving as defenses will be focusing in on Robbie Anderson. This will be the year if Quincy Anunua didn't get hurt last year, he was a guy that I would have been targeting in late rounds but instead just a year delayed to 2018. Looking at the AFC West next and starting with the Denver Broncos, my prediction here focuses on one Emmanuel Sanders and that he will end up being the top fantasy scoring wide receiver for the Denver Broncos offensively. And my reason being here, the addition of Case Keenum, all the success he had last year with the Vikings, his favorite target, who was it? Adam Thielen, the slot wide receiver. And again, insert Emmanuel Sanders in that position now. I think he will continue to go ahead and look at his slot wide receivers, and that means good fortunes for Sanders. Next, looking at the Kansas City Chiefs, this was an offense that I was really scared of going into the offseason. Now, I'm not going to lie, uh, the reports that have come out and what I've seen in the preseason, even though it is the preseason, make me feel a little bit better. And I'm focusing here on Tyree Kill, where I think when it's all said and done in 2018, he can be a top 10 wide receiver. Even though I do expect Patrick Mahomes to have his own struggles, I really like the combination of that deep ball that he possesses along with the speed that Tyreek Hill has. He's been getting better and better every single year, and I think 2018 will be no different. Then looking at the LA Chargers next, my prediction here centers around Keenan Allen, a fantasy darling at the wide receiver spot last year finally stayed healthy for an entire season and look at what he did. He absolutely killed it. But look, unfortunately, I'm saying that in terms of value and where he is being picked this year, where his rankings line up, which is early second round, he will be a disappointment in that category because I do think that he will go back down to earth a little bit. Mike Williams is still there. Antonio Gates returning and this is going to be the probably last year Melvin Gordon is there. So I do think targets will go elsewhere a little bit more so. And for that reason, I think probably where Keenan Allen should be getting drafted more closely is towards the end of the second round than the start of the second round. And finally, looking at the Oakland Raiders, my prediction here focuses on their pass catchers. And that specifically, it's not going to be Amari Cooper that leads the pack, but Jordy Nelson. Look, uh, Nelson didn't exactly have the best couple of years in Green Bay here, but I think a change of venue is going to do him wonders, and all reports coming out of camp is that he's looked tremendous. Uh, I think him and Derek Carr are going to be able to go ahead, get on the same page. There's just too many concerns that I have with Amari Cooper after that disappearing act that he had last year, and preferably, I'm going to go ahead, take a chance on Jordy Nelson, who people aren't even mentioning and thinking about when it comes to drafting wide receivers in this year's uh, drafts. And finally, finishing off with the AFC South, looking at the Houston Texans first. My prediction here centers around the running back Lamar Miller, because I think this will finally be the year where everything that we've been expecting and waiting and hoping for comes together for Miller with Deshaun Watson, a good offense. And that's going to translate to a top 10 running back fantasy season. That's right. I said it and I'm going to stick by it. He's going to be a guy that I target. And 
I'm going to end up feeling comfortable if he is my running back number one. Then looking at the Indianapolis Colts, here, I'm looking at Andrew Luck squarely because when it's all said and done in 2018, I don't think he will finish the season. I think he's going to end up re-aggravating the injury or it's going to be another injury or he just doesn't play as well as people expect. So for that reason, I think Andrew Luck finishes the season not on the field, but most likely on IR for the Colts, which spells a lot of trouble for all those offensive weapons in Indy. Next, looking at the Jacksonville Jaguars, I am focusing in on Leonard Fournette, who with that amazing offensive line, with a game-managing quarterback, and with a defense that keeps getting better and better, I think will have plenty of opportunities, and it's going to be between either him or Ezekiel Elliott, but I give the edge to Leonard Fournette specifically for the defense that he leads the NFL in rushing touchdowns. And finally, looking at the Tennessee Titans, while I do think they are a well-balanced team, I don't think there's a certain category in there that screams top-notch talent to me. So for that reason, I'm predicting that not a single one of those offensive players in Tennessee will finish top 15 in their categories as far as wide receivers in fantasy, PPR, or standard. Same for their running backs as well. So with that, we get to an end of these bold fantasy predictions for every single team this fantasy season. Let me know what you guys thought. I'm sure there will be a lot of disagreements. Let me see it in the comments section. If you guys agreed, that's even better. Let me hear it as well. And as always, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in future videos.